The following is a presentation of the Chicago Bears Network and ChicagoBears.com. Download the Chicago Bears official mobile app for up-to-the-minute Bears content every day. And now, welcome to Bears All Access, your all-access pass into Chicago Bears football. Bears All Access is brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Athletico Physical Therapy and CDW. Hey, pleasant good evening, everybody. Welcome into the broadcast. Hope your Christmas and holidays, wherever you may have been or where you're going, I guess. Some people never made it out of town, I guess, to go and enjoy their Christmas or their holiday. Uh, but New Year's is approaching, and the Bears are going to get the Detroit Lions at Ford Field. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Joniak with my broadcast partner from News Radio 105.9 WBBM, Super Bowl winning Bear, Tom Thayer. How are you doing, first of all? I'm doing good. You know, you think about these games on New Year's Eve. When was your first New Year's Eve game? And it was back in college. And I remember they're laying in the dorm room thinking, man, you know, most people my age are out having a good time or out, you know, partying and stuff. And here we sat in a dorm room. But there's always something special about playing on the holidays. And we just had that experience on Christmas Eve. Now, nothing better than New Year's Day. Yeah, New Year's Day, for sure. It's all about ball. And uh, that's uh, pretty much the life of one Jim Miller, the former Bears quarterback from Sirius XM NFL Radio, kind enough to join us tonight. Big Jim, how you feeling? Hope you had a great holiday. Gentlemen, I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, had a great holiday. And l- like you said, it was tough traveling, getting down to uh, Soldier Field, obviously, this this past weekend. Took a little bit of extra time, but hope everybody's staying warm and, and is safe. But, yeah, everything's been great. Hey, th- th- as, as Tom just explained, it's kind of football season. I mean, it, it, it's not that they're not special days, but it, you'd feel almost lost if you're not working on the holiday. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. So it's a good thing. You feel like something went south for your career if you're not yeah, <laughs> right exactly <laughs> i don't want that to happen so uh also we're going to be joined coming up here by lomas brown the former detroit lion we love big lomas he's always fun to talk to the veteran analyst of the detroit lions and the executive director of the Reese senior bowl jim Nagel will join us at the bottom of the hour tom uh as we broke down the lions earlier this morning we met at hallisaw and knocked some stuff out for the preview uh, the one thing that I talked about was the whole NFC North thing, and I, I really feel this is going to be – I think we even previewed the Week 10 matchup the same way, uh, kind of a black and blue old school kind of game, and, and that game was fun. 31-30, 147 yards for Justin. Bears didn't get the win, but the Lions kind of have taken off since then, 6-2. and two. They got rolled over by Carolina, but maybe this is a preview of what these two teams are going to be here in the years to come. Listen, the best, the thing that would leave me with the best taste in my mouth is that the Bears went into Detroit and ran their offensive scheme efficiently because it is going to be a noisy atmosphere, unlike what they've probably played in the last eight or ten years. So it's going to be interesting to see how well that the Bears' offense is able to function and be physical because I think that's going to tell a story for quite a few years to come the way they're excited about what they got going on right now. Jim, it sounds like they might open up standing room only again. They want that place rocking. It was a few weeks ago. They've been on the road for a couple weeks, but is that place lit right now? They are. They're excited about the the Detroit Lions. I think, you know, every team in the NFC North has really sh- shown some resolve and toughness. We think uh, Bears have been competitive in a lot of games. They were really one-score matchups. Even the Dallas game, you know, where it, Ultimately, Dallas kind of pulled away from the Bears, but it was one score. They've been these these tight, competitive uh, ball games. You look at the last game against Detroit. I mean, basically, the Bears had a two touchdown lead, right? And then, of course, Justin threw the pick six, and then it started uh, uh, to tighten up. And we'll see if the Bears can really take advantage of how the Lions' uh, def- rush defense was exposed last week, as you mentioned uh, to Carolina. Because I do think the Bears will have the ability to do that. All right, Tom, we watched the tape. Jim, I don't know if you watched the entire tape yet. What did Carolina do to Detroit in the ground game? How did they do this? It was, you know, there's a term for quick hitters, not plays that take a long time to develop and allow a running back to use his sight to pick and choose where it's going to open up. No, it's a defined point of attack with execution at the line of scrimmage that opened up the defense and the first level blockers were getting to the second level and they were sustaining blocks and there was no hesitation from the running back. So, you know, there's comes a point in time where it, you know, you got a guy like Barry Sanders or, uh, you know, uh, Henry, where they you know go for 300 yards on their own this was a well-executed game plan 
by the entire offensive line blocking scheme and the uh, commitment of the running backs to hit the hole. And one of the things, Jim, uh, that Tom has talked about, he'd like to see the Bears uh, get the bulk of their rushing yards uh, from their running backs against Detroit Mm -hmm. if they can pull that off. Uh, Not so much the 147 for Justin Fields. Where are you at on that? Because with, you take away all the yards, and it's 1,011 for Justin. He's trying to get the uh, single-season record, of course, of Lamar Jackson, while the Bears are also trying to set the single-season record from Bears history, which is uh, less than 300 yards away uh, from 1984 when it was set. Uh, but they still are averaging 4.7 yards a carry without Justin. So it's been a good year for Montgomery, Herbert, Darrington Evans, and the fellas. Yeah, and I like Herbert back in the, in the lineup because really Detroit – they they couldn't stop the the zone game last week and the RPO stuff gave them problems too and a lot of it was their their linebacker gap issues yeah they were getting to the gaps but as Tom will explain there was a timing part of it too of when you need to get to those gaps you know it's when the the back is about to reach the hole so there was a lot of uh, you know just a lot of in, lack of integrity last week by the Detroit linebackers last week. And if you don't believe me, like uh, we just had Paul Alexander on, former NFL offensive line coach, he specifically looked at that game because it's like, how the heck do you get over 320 yards rushing? And that's what he saw, and he actually wrote up a a couple of keys that he thought really Detroit was was faulty in terms of the rushing defense. So specifically it was the timing of the linebackers and when they tried to reach the the gaps that they needed to get to. And so we're wondering exactly how the Bears are going to be defended now against the run because here's what Braxton Jones said Monday at Hallis Hall about what the Bills did to take away fields in the run game. Obviously, I was seeing is the um, mess charge, so the DNs, you know, slanting inside and they're bringing the backer over top, but then they're blitzing off of that as well. Um, so that was the biggest thing I saw. I mean, I'm no offensive coordinator or anything like that, but obviously. Um, some of that they they did get us on. I feel like some of those safety pressures, and we got to be a little bit better when we do have movement and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just stuff that we're always going to see, and you know, we just got to execute a little bit better. Um, I can't talk for everybody, but even myself, I just think I got to execute better when stuff does start moving around. But obviously, you know, they had a they, they game plan just like we game plan. So um, you know, we knew some of that stuff was coming. We just as a as a unit were. You know, one off, and we got to be a little bit better. Tom and Jim, uh, Lions play a lot of nickel, and their DBs play close to the line of scrimmage. What we can, what can we expect on how they defend these well, guys? Well, if you follow what Braxton said, you got better be alert of their defensive ends playing to outside contain and trying to keep Justin inside that pocket. And um, if you can contain him somehow, maybe that some that's the best medicine because you look at the way the Buffalo Bills were able to do it. Had a guy in inside of their defense and. You know, he went from a linebacker to a spy to a pass rusher all in one play. Jim? Yeah, I think, you know, you're going to see wide nine techniques. They don't want Justin to get to the outside, and they're just going to overplay him because he's the player that's going to beat you, right? We've seen him take, uh, you know, these runs over 60 yards to, to the house, and you get a house call, and the teams are not going to allow that to happen. They'd rather bleed a, a slow death by, hey, five could be five yards here by David Montgomery, could be four to five here by, by Khalil Herbert, but they're not going to give it up all on one play from Justin Fields just uh, dodging and weaving through the – uh, through the defense uncontested. So they're going to try to corral them, uh, much like Tom uh, just talked about, and I think it will be with the edge guys on the outside. Whether it's a blitzer coming from the outside, could be at the nickelback position, could be a wide nine technique. Those guys are setting the edge better because they do not they do not want Justin and want to keep him contained from getting outside. Thanks to our producers, Dan Brilli, Jordan Tredup, and Leah Stradaher at the score. Uh, coming up next. Lomas Brown joins the program. This is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score. We love clean hits and clean energy. IGS Energy now offers 100% green electricity and carbon neutral natural gas. Because every good choice adds up to a better world. We are IGS Energy. Join us and let's go green for good. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. 
calling all Bears fans. Get the ultimate VIP fan package at Soldier Field this season with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket, pre-game hospitality, appearances from Bears legends, and more all in one place. Make the most of your game day experience at Soldier Field this season. Get your VIP fan package by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com today. It's game time, but before Terry can enjoy his brat, he's got one last thing to digest, an impending work deadline. Luckily, CDW helps Terry and his team make big plays from anywhere, even the tailgate, by pre-configuring Lenovo ThinkPads with the Intel Evo platform. With business class performance and effortless connectivity, Terry tosses over the files, and she's got them. Lenovo makes seamless productivity possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Lenovo client. CDW, official technology solutions advisor of the Chicago Bears. Fact, only .0001% of people will ever step up to the plate as a pro baseball player. For the rest of us, there's BetRivers.com Sportsbook app. Featuring same-game parlays, you can combine different bets all from the same game. Download the BetRivers.com Sportsbook app today. It's a whole new game. Not valid for any participant of the Illinois Gaming Board statewide voluntary self-exclusion program. Must be 21 years of age or older. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2537. Are your eco-friendly bulbs lit with eco-friendly power? IGIS Energy now offers 100% green electricity and carbon neutral natural gas because every good choice adds up to a better world. We are IGS Energy. Join us and let's go green for good. Welcome back to Bears All Access. We're brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. With Tom Thayer and Sirius XM, NFL Radio's Jim Miller from Moving the Chains. Joining us here on this week's edition on a Tuesday night, getting ready for New Year's Day in Detroit. Uh, Leo uh, Stoddaher is our producer in the SCORE studios. Please let me know when we have uh, Lomas ready to go. And we will get to Lomas Brown of the Detroit Lions when ready. As the Bears uh, try to stop an eight-game losing streak, Tom, uh, that is a tie for the longest in franchise history. And that's certainly something that is probably going to get a lot of attention. But right now, this team, they have been very resilient despite these losses in terms of keeping it together, keeping the morale up, and looking forward to the future. I mean, if there was any two weeks during a player's career, I would ask some of the young guys to stay off of social media. Just don't listen to the narrative on what's going on outside because they have been doing a good job of focusing their attention and coming out and, and you know, going toe-to-toe with these guys. And, I mean, I hate to use the terms that the Bears are the spoilers, but, it, uh, you know, it would be make it for an interesting game for the Bears to go in there and be spoilers for Detroit's uh, playoff hopes. And, Jim, they definitely do have playoff hopes. Now, if they go 2-0 and and Washington and Seattle go 1-1, one and one, um, and I think the Giants are involved in this, if any two of the three happen, the Lions would go to the playoffs. Now, they got to beat the Bears, and they got to win at Green Bay. And those are not guarantees because no. I do think the Bears are going to be willing to to put up a fight. I, I like the one-score games and just, you know, we talked about them coming out of the bye and just how they were prepared against the, the Philadelphia Eagles. I like the fight of the Bears last week against Buffalo. Yeah, and it, it doesn't end in a win. I think everybody understands that. But there are parts of that game that they're in the game and just but the ability to close it out in certain situations. And so now you can't always get those two weeks to prepare. Uh, we know they did it earlier, like uh, how well they played against New England when they went on the road with that 10-day layoff. But I like how they prepared the last two weeks. Now put it together and finish it. And like you said, be a, be a spoiler against Detroit. I, I love what Coach Eberflus, Eberflus said. It, you know, it, it's upon these players that got to learn how to compete in this division. Um and players need to play. We know not everybody's 100%. you got to be mentally tough because why? At the end of the year, there's going to be decisions made. And are you willing to bring back some of these players on this roster that, you know, it's it's win, you know it's been light with the wins? And those are the decisions uh, that the, the front office and the coaches are going to have to make. So it's imperative that all these guys go out and they, they put it all on the line these last two weeks. All right, time to bring in the former Detroit Lion great, our old pal Lomas Brown. We met with him uh, before week 10. He's back with us here for week 17. And Lomas, thanks for joining the program. Hope you had a great Christmas. 
and a great holiday. And things have certainly changed with the Detroit Lions since last we met. Yeah, they sure have, man. It was, I mean, we were in the midst of <laughs> of misery um, when we last talked. And you guys added on to it. Uh, it, it was meaning that statistically it was just a great day uh, for Justin Fields and what the offense was able to do against our defense, even though we got the close win. But, again, it's, it's just things have changed. And now you wouldn't think that we would be playing meaningful football in December, but that's the case right now. And hopefully we can continue, especially after the – let down from last week. We just physically got beat up against Carolina, so hopefully the same thing won't happen against a tough Chicago Bear team. Hey, Lomas, it's always great to talk to you. We look forward to it. So let me put uh, just a scenario in your head. Penny Sewell, 6'5", 240 pounds, 340 pounds. A couple weeks ago as an eligible receiver, he goes out and he catches a big pass. <laughs> and But you, you talk about the mentality of what they're trying to get to there and the seriousness of their approach, but then they have a play like that up designed and usable. What What's the – so are the Detroit Lions the Penny Sewell receiver, or are they the Dan Campbell stiff upper lip? That, you know what? That That's a great, great question because, again, I think the identity has gotten lost over these last couple of weeks. We haven't been able to run the ball. We haven't been able to really establish the line of scrimmage the way that we thought or the way that we need to for this offense to work the way it really, really wants to work. Protection has been good all year long. Those guys have done a fabulous job of giving Jared Goff the time that he needs. But it's just the run game is the biggest concern right now. And maybe you're right. Maybe it's too many gadget plays. Maybe it needs to be more old school between the tackles, pounded at a guy. But I tell you what, and I think that's what they're going to try to get back to against Chicago because, again, we were embarrassed up front against Carolina. Carolina punched us in the mouth. They came off the ball. They did everything they needed to do to establish over 300 rushing yards. So the Lions definitely going to have a tough task today, especially with a team like Chicago coming in with the dynamic Justin Fields. Well, let me ask you this, Lomas. Uh, Jim Miller here. Good to talk to you again. I mean, because up, yeah, up till that point last week, I mean, you only gave up 17 points to, to the Jets. I mean, 23 to, to Minnesota, 14 to Jacksonville. And then you look at the weeks prior, even, you know, only 18 to the Giants. I mean, what what was it up front? I, I brought up maybe the timing or the fitting wow. of the gaps of the linebackers, but 37 points, and then you mentioned that the over 300 yards rushing, it was just – was it an unfamiliar opponent, just not your day? What what kind of was it from, from that standpoint? Yeah, I think it was a combination of all of that. I, I definitely take the unfamiliar opponent out of there because think about it. They basically, Steve Wilkes basically told us what they were going to do. He basically said we are going to run the ball against Detroit, and that's what happened. I just think what I think is that, that was a hungry, hungry team. And sometimes I think the Lions, I think they got shocked and surprised at how hard they came out on that first series. I think they they were on their heels that very first series of the game. And I think it was that way the rest of the game, especially on the defensive side of the ball. A big turnover when the game was 7-7 with us with the opportunity to go in to either get three points or seven points. And we had the fumble snap. But, again, defensively, after that first series, man, I think they were shell-shocked. And I think Carolina knew that. And I think they just laid the blade down and they did what they could do. That big old offensive line leaned on our, our lean, fast defensive line and just wore them out. Lomas brought our guest. He is the veteran analyst of the Detroit Lions and a great, great tackle in his day with Detroit here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score. We're brought to you by IGS Energy. we got to talk Jared Goff because we, we've certainly over the years uh, maybe not uh, been so complimentary about him, but, hey, he's tearing it up. 26 touchdown passes, seven interceptions. 
I, I believe he's the only guy in the league with that right now in, in terms of that touchdown-interception ratio. And despite that loss, I mean, he tore it up. He was making right decisions last week. How would you assess his overall play and what he needs to do for the Lions to get to the playoffs? I, I mean, to me, he's a guy that if he was betting on this stuff, man, he's winning. If this was a contract year, he's getting paid at the end of this year. It's just all those scenarios you could say with Jared. Man, he's been Mr. Cool and Calm the whole year. I'm telling you, I tell people, you can look at Jared Goff and you wouldn't know whether you're winning or losing the game by looking at his facial expression. And that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing as a quarterback because, again, when you're in that huddle and you're able to look at a guy that has that calm demeanor, a guy that doesn't get rattled when things aren't going your way, then it kind of sets that demeanor with you, too, and you feel that it's things that you can get accomplished. So, to me, he's been steady all year long. If you have to go for say who's our MVP for the Detroit Lions, I mean, it has to be Jared Goff. I mean, it really does the way he's played all year long. And Jared's showing that he should be the quarterback of the Detroit Lions in the future, too. Hey, Lomas, tell me a little bit about the atmosphere on Sunday. Are Detroit Lions season ticket holders selling their tickets, or is it going to be a Lion-heavy crowd? You know what, that's a great question, man, and you know it, too, because I'm telling you, people are cautious around here. Now, after that bad loss, now you got the naysayers, the same old Lions. You got all these naysayers coming out again where we had hushed them, you know, during that winning streak. So you're right. I mean, think about it. You know it, man. They've been scoring, man, Lion fans. Think about it for years, since the 50s. Championship hasn't been said here since the 50s, and you know they ain't doing championships anymore. So the last playoff win was 31 years ago. These people are hungry. They deserve it, and they've been scoring throughout the years. So, you know, that you, you can't blame them for being cautiously optimistic about what's going to happen on Sunday. They don't know which team is going to show up on Sunday. You know, Dan Campbell is saying which team is going to show up on Sunday, but until we see it, people are just they, they're just cautious. I live in Lion Country, and they want to restore the roar, Tom. I'm telling you, they're hoping to restore the roar, <laughs> and hopefully these bears can be a little ornery here this weekend. But let me ask you, Lomas, about Jamison Williams. We know, I, you know, I saw when he first got his first touchdown, the the big post for a touchdown, and just how have you seen him or maybe his pitch count and how much he's been able to play and really cut on that knee as the Lions are playing the long game with him because this guy is a just a talented player who's really got a yeah. – a, a career of stardom at the receiver position. Jim, they, they've been teasing us. Oh, they've been teasing us. they just been teasing us all year long with him. And I'm so ready. I'm so ready for him to get a work role in a game so we could see what he could do. But I don't know. Maybe you you might be right. Maybe the knee, you know, I don't know. But you're right. They've been very, very cautious with him. And I can see why. I mean, because like you say, you don't get generational speed like that. And you can see what guys like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, what they're doing, man, with that speed. So if you get it and you can utilize it right, it's a big, it's a powerful weapon. So, yeah, man, that's that's like, that, it's the Jameson Williams watch. Man, we want, he, he, we want him to get in there. I want him to get in there so he could get a load and stuff. But, again, they just been they just been cautious with him. And, you know, maybe they see something or know something that we don't. All right, Lomas, we're going to let you go. One final question. Appreciate your time, as always. Uh, we didn't get to see James Houston in the first go-around. He comes in. He gets four sacks in the first four games of his season. Last week he had a pressure. He drew a flag uh, on a hold from the offensive line there of Carolina. Where did this guy come from, Jackson State, sixth-round pick? How good is he? Man, I tell you what, what he could do with his body, that's why he's able to get round the corner on these offensive tackles. And he Because he, he's so limber and he's so able to get low and get underneath these guys and bend that corner. 
That I mean, it's it's impressive. I I've never seen a rookie come in, especially after missing all that time, and just have the impact that he's had. But every time he gets in the game, he's going to do something. He's going to flash. He's going to do something. So it's just been awesome to watch. And I, we we're hoping that he has a big game. We're hoping that Romeo Cor, who we just got back, he has a big game. So. We're going to need it if we're going to stay in this playoff race. Well, you know, uh, we apologize if we hope you don't have those big games. <laughs> All right, my friend. <laughs> we'll, see you. we'll see you Sunday. Happy New Year, and uh, we'll see you at Fort Field. Thanks so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> the great Lomas Brown, our guest here on Bears All Access. Love Big Lomas. We'll talk to Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl, the executive director of the Reese Senior Bowl, coming up at the bottom of the hour with Jim Miller and Tom there. I'm Jeff Joniak. This is Bears All Access brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. What do you call a group of friends decked out in orange and blue who hug and toast with Miller Lite after every great play and in between endless choruses of the Bears? You call it Miller Time in Chicago. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2022 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Football legends weren't born making game-changing touchdowns. They started out like the rest of us, playing with the neighborhood kids. And while it wasn't the playground or the local field that made them great, those places did give them the opportunity to become great. At PNC, we believe every kid deserves a place to play and learn. Over the years, we've teamed up with the Chicago Bears to give the kids of Chicago learning resource centers that spark curiosity. PNC Bank and the Chicago Bears. Just one way we're making a difference. The PNC Financial Services Group, Inc., all rights reserved. This isn't the start. Before I got here... I started training, and before that, I did something to my back. But my first move was Athletico Physical Therapy. That's where I'd eventually end up, so why not start there? I mean, my therapist immediately found the source of my pain. These are the same physical therapists who work with elite marathon runners. So soon, I was back to running, but without pain. (sighs) You got this. It all starts at Athletico. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. What makes Mercedes-Benz of Chicago so special? It's the same reason we cheer on the monsters of the Midway. They're our home team. We've been serving our Chicago clients for over 19 years and are thrilled to kick off our sponsorship of the Bears. With our preferred owner benefits and a dedicated off-site service facility, we're your best choice to purchase, lease, and maintain your three-pointed star. The Bears and Mercedes-Benz of Chicago are looking forward to a winning season. Visit MercedesBenzChicago.com for details. Bear down. (laughs) I've always wanted to say that. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit Athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually and start feeling better tomorrow. Jeff Joniak along with Tom Thayer, my broadcast partner from WBBM, and Jim Miller from SiriusXM NFL Radio. Moving the chains coming up in moments. Jim Nagy from uh, the Senior Bowl will join us. We'll take a look at some of the Bears that actually worked last year at the Senior Bowl, in which Jim Miller always attends, and uh, we'll see how he projected some of those guys because I believe there are five that were at the Senior Bowl that are on the Bears roster. And, Jim, nobody's played more rookies in terms of snaps than the Chicago Bears in 2022. Yeah, and uh, I think we knew that. I think we knew it was going to be a year about growth and development of young players, and hopefully, you know, these players will continue to finish out, finish strong. As you know, unfortunately for Brisker, he had to miss a couple of games. He's back in there. Nice to see him get a sack uh, this past uh, weekend. And you know, it's just it's a great resource. I mean, you, you got to check out the the Senior Bowl in Mobile because probably ninety two percent of that roster is drafted, um, and a lot of it is by teams like front offices general managers talking and they try to politic to get certain guys 
in the game, like, hey, we got a grade of this on this player, and and so certainly you're looking at uh, uh, the top tier talent, and it's uh, you know from the first round all the way down to the to the late rounders. These are solid football players. I mean, look at uh, you know the the number of young players that that have played this year, and it's not just for the Bears, but around the league, right? And right. I think when when you hit even on these lower round draft picks that really show in Mobile, uh, you feel pretty confident about where you are and. Teams like Seattle consistently will tap into it. I've talked to GMs like uh, John Schneider. They believe in what is done in Mobile, and that's why Jim Nagy says the draft starts there. You're right, Jim Nagy. Joining us right now, the executive director of the Reese Senior Bowl, just over a month out from Senior Bowl week in Mobile, Alabama. Practices beginning Tuesday, January 31st through Thursday of that week in the game Saturday, February 4th. Jim, thanks for taking the time. Hope your holiday was fantastic. How are you? It was great, guys. Thanks for having me back on. And actually, it kind of felt like Chicago down here. We were in the teens and the in the twenties. I know uh, my family's up in northern Michigan, and they were they, they had it much worse than we did down here. But it uh, it actually kind of felt like Christmas for the first time since I've lived here in fifteen years. Uh, well, I, I tell you, with all due respect, uh, that windshield was pretty bad <laughs> on Christmas Eve at Soldier Field for Tommy and I. We were we were freezing cold, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, yes, the whole country has suffered uh, some uh, some real uh, chill here in the last, and no no more than uh, the Northeast with Buffalo. Uh, really, a, a tough situation there. Anyway, this yeah. is the preeminent cottage football star game, and and as you like to say, Jim, the the first stage of the draft process. And I wanted to get you on here. Uh, we did just to talk about some of the Bears that experienced it last year and how you've watched them, or if you did, guys that uh, have done well for the Bears. And I, I'm going to start with Braxton Jones. He was a fifth-round pick out of Southern Utah, and he will start his 16th game on Sunday in Detroit. The only other rookie left tackles drafted on day three to start 16 games in the season in the past decade, David Bakhtiari of the Packers in 2013 and Dan Moore last season uh what did you see with braxton and how have you seen him develop yeah it's, it's pretty incredible i mean that's one of those positions it's a premium spot where you feel like you need to spend an early round pick at left tackle usually you, those guys are drafted in the first second round once you get back that you're either drafting right tackles or you're drafting backups um so to get a starting left tackle in the fifth round is uh great work by ryan poles uh, i'll say this I, I didn't even envision braxton um you know, becoming a starter as a rookie. I mean, he was he was our highest graded FCS um, lineman last year in the summertime before the season started um, out there at Southern Utah. And he had some play up games. I think I want to say they played at Arizona State that year. Uh, played up against another another good group, another another team out west. Um, maybe it was Utah, but but we saw him play a number of times. He was a guy that got that uh, we I think we had three or four different scouts watch him. And you love the feet, and you love the athlete. You, you knew he needed to get stronger. He was thin in his lower half. Um, you, you thought he needed time to fill out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I saw a guy that could start down the line, not year one. So for him to get in there and do what he's doing and holding up the way he's holding up, really impressive. And, and I think it, it on the offensive line, all these guys get better between year one and year two. Um, but to me, that's the O line is one of those positions where the guys can really make a jump. So the fact they've got he, now he's got this many starts under his belt heading into year two. If they could get their franchise tackle, left tackle, the future in the fifth round, I mean that just sets you up from a from a team perspective. You know, from an overall cap perspective, uh, so much better than having to go out and spend a first or second round draft pick on that. Hey, Jim, when you look at the upcoming roster, is there a glut of any one position where we're going to be looking at the draft and we're going to say, wow, they're going to get a good player in the sixth round or seventh round, wherever it may come from? Um, and do you feel that there's a over number, uh, a, good, a good group of players at one position? Well, I, I think you can look at running back, and that's just the nature of that spot right now. You guys, you guys came down here and got Khalil Herbert a couple of years ago, and and, uh, you know, guys posted a bunch of 100-yard games. So, for a sixth-round pick, I mean, that's really good value. I, I just think backs are being pushed down a little bit. I um, mean, there'll be some good backs in that range this year. Um, I think there'll be some tight ends that, that get pushed down into those middle rounds, fifth, sixth. There's a lot, a lot of good tight ends in this year's group. Um, and there's some corners. You know, you, you guys came down a couple of years ago, got Kendall Vildor uh, from Georgia Southern. But I think there's, there's going to be some bigger corners um, down the line, developmental big corners. You know, like we had Tariq Woolen for the Seattle Seahawks in last year's game, went in the fifth and, and now making the Pro Bowl. I think there's going to be – we, we have a big corner group coming. Um, there's going to be some guys in that mold. 
Well, Jim, Jim Miller here. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. And uh, thanks. Just want you to really tell the Chicago market there's there's all these activities during the week leading up to the game. You know, that, that fans can come down that are unfamiliar with Mobile. I've been going there for, for 16 years. I enjoy it. But the, the activities leading up to the game, the, the concert that is going to be at the late in the week, and it marries up with Mardi Gras this year. So there's a lot going on down in Mobile that maybe some, some Bears fans would want to participate while they check out the top talent in, in the country uh, at the game. Yeah, Mills, I appreciate you bringing that up. And you played in the game, too, so you've been coming down for a long time, a lot longer than 16 years. Um, but, but no, it, you know, the goal when we got here five years ago was to really build the week out and give people more than just a, a, the game, um, you know, a, to a reason to come to Mobile. So, you know, Thursday night we have a Senior Bowl Summit event. Um, this year it's going to – last year it was Kirk Herb Street and Nick Saban. And, um, but it's a panel-style event. This year it's going to be uh, – it's an Alabama-Auburn theme, so we're going to have a bunch of the Alabama and Auburn greats back um, for that event. It's at a historic theater downtown. We've got, it, like you said, um, we are having a Mardi Gras parade, and it's actual. this is the home of Mardi Gras, and it's the actual first night of Mardi Gras. So we're going to have about 100,000 people downtown Mobile for that first parade. Our players will be um, parading first. We'll be going first, and those guys will be throwing a bunch of autographed footballs, and then we're capping that off that night with a big concert downtown, um, outside, out, outdoor concert, free concert with Nelly. And then game day on Saturday, and I, I, like I tell people, if you, if, if you love the NFL, um, it's really this is the place to be. Um, I, I sound biased sitting in the chair I'm sitting in now, but um, if you love the NFL, uh, Mobile's a really small town. It's a nice, intimate feel. You could, I tell people all the time, you could post up a lawn chair in front of our offices downtown, and over the course of the week, you would see just about every head coach and general manager um, walk by because they're all down here. And, and again, they're approachable. It's laid back. It's just a, a really cool vibe down here. The NFL kind of descends on our, on our town every year. So I appreciate you, you queuing me up there, Mills, uh, to pitch the game. But it really is, a, you know, for like a, a long weekend, a guy's weekend, um, if you're a football fan and you just want to, you know, get a head start on the draft process and just be around NFL people, this is the place to be. Executive Director of the Reese Senior Boat, Jim Nagy, our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. We're brought to you by IGS Energy, Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer, and Jim Miller. All right, go back to the Bears, if you will. Jatari Carter, Dominique Robinson, Sterling Weatherford, and Bayless Jones Jr. also out of the Senior Bowl on the Bears roster right now. Bayless with a big week last week with a 44-yard catch. Perfect throw by Justin Fields. I don't know if you saw the play, Jim. It was all over Twitter. Uh, Bayless' speed, and it married with the arm of Justin Fields fields and then Dominique Robinson a former quarterback turned defensive end he's still raw he's still learning how to put together his toolbox as a pass rusher uh, but what a great opportunity uh, for this talented athlete and the other guys Carter has not gotten into the mix yet uh, but Sterling Weatherford's been on special teams with I think there's been nine rookies Jim on special teams coverage units this year for the Bears yeah, they've done a they've done a nice job. This rookie class, they've gotten some mileage out of them, and I, I really think they're again with the Braxton Joneses and the Dominique uh, Robinson. So those guys are really picked for the future. So the fact that they're getting them out there in some roles um, as rookies is great. You know, Ryan Poles, uh, we go back a long way. His first job in the NFL uh, was when I was in Kansas City when Ryan was starting off in the league, and I was I was a, a national scout with the Chiefs. So um, it's been it's been fun to watch Ryan, you know, put in his first year of work and. And they are. They're, they're, they're getting mileage out of that group. And, and I would say guys like Dominique Robinson, that's another guy, just kind of scratching the surface. To think he was playing wide receiver in the MAC, you know, three years ago, four years ago, um, and now he's on an NFL roster looking the way he looks. Pretty impressive. Um, you know, just some, some high-ceiling players, you know. And then you just go back a couple of years, we brought up Khalil Herbert. You got Chase, you traded for Chase Claypool. I think that he's going to pay more dividends next year uh, if you get him locked up. And and even Bayless Jones, um, and I know that, that he's frustrated some of the Chicago fans, like not, not you know, getting right with it right, right off the bat, but he does have a specific skill set, you know, in terms of stretching the field and making plays with the ball in his hands. Um, I think the return stuff will come. I know that he's had some, some hiccups there in the return game, but, uh, you know, they took him 71 overall for a reason. He can really, really run, and he, and he can be a dynamic playmaker. Um, I definitely think he's someone that they can build with fields. I think this past week was just kind of you were just getting your first glimpse of that. Jim, you ever get a player that actually sells himself to you and pleads his case because some of these guys will do anything to get the opportunity to play in front of that house of scouts? Have you ever had something like that come across your desk? 
Uh, yeah, there's a guy where there's a player right now that's been, uh, you know, the, that's the thing about social media. They can, you're all, you're pretty accessible and, uh, they figure out a way to get to you and, and it's hard, you know, I, I, I but I, I level with all these players. Um, you know, we've built out a personnel staff here. We've got nine former NFL scouts, um, on our staff this year, one being a former bear scout. Um, and that's how we've built it every year. We kind of redo the staff every year, but, uh, we do all our own work and, and it like, uh, you know, was brought up in the, the opening part of the segment was that we do, we lean on our relationships in the NFL. Uh, we don't pretend we have all the answers, but we do do all our own work. And then we compare, we compare notes and we compare grades with, with GMs and personnel directors around the league to, to bring the right guys. So when a player starts to politic, you just got to be honest with them. Um, usually if they're politic and that means they didn't get an invite right out of the shoots, but um, you know, I, I just, I just want to be a voice for these players because there's so many, so many players that one of the biggest issues is these guys get all told what they want to hear and not what they, not what they really need to hear. So, um, it certainly happens. Those circumstances certainly come up. Well, you look at, to me, how about Debo Samuel when he arrived there and he had the, you know, didn't have a good year at South Carolina, had the broken foot and he kind of showed up there and this was kind of a, a man among boys, you know, and, and, and look what he's doing right now, uh, in the NFL and hopefully he comes back this week for, for San Francisco, but I mean, how players can state their case is really my question. Because players can make a big statement by playing in this particular type of bowl game that could really set them up for their NFL careers. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. Um, I think it's, if you look at your rivals, Christian Watson from the Green Bay Packers, who really like the last five or six weeks has taken off in Green Bay. I think fantasy owners know that. Um, but a year ago, you know, a year ago at this time, most teams had Christian in the fourth or fifth round. Um, he had a great week here in Mobile. He ran really fast at the combine and ends up going 34th overall. And so a lot of the small school guys really benefit. We had a linebacker, Troy Anderson, last year from Montana State, uh, who came down here as a fifth or sixth round pick and ended up going like right around 50 overall to Atlanta. But it's not just the small school guys. You bring up Debo, but that same year we had Terry McLaurin in the game. Um, and I'm, uh, I was honest with Terry when we invited him, I invited him off, off his special teams tape. He was a, a unbelievable gunner on punt team for Ohio state. He wasn't their top option. Uh, Paris Campbell was, and, uh, you know, Terry was in that fifth, sixth round range as well and came down here and, and Mills, you saw it. I mean, nobody could cover the guy. I mean, yeah. just as a route runner and the speed, he was the fastest guy in the, in the senior bowl that year with our GPS tracking stuff. And, Terry moved himself up into the third round, and now in hindsight, I mean, he was way underdrafted. He probably should have won the first round. So, um, yeah, there, there's great stories like that every year, um, and that's really the, the fun part of having this job. I mean, there's a lot of things I miss about working in the NFL, um, but the rewarding part is just seeing these guys come down here and put, their, put themselves on the line and compete and, you know, just let the cards fall, fall where they may, and it's, it's just great seeing some of those guys make the big jumps. Final question with Senior Bowl Executive Director Jim Nagy here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This is Bears All Access brought to you by IGS Energy. So are all the invitations out? I know uh, some of the other uh, All-Star games, maybe somebody gets uh, invited late, but uh, has everything gone out? And then just some of the local schools from Northwestern. I know there's a couple guys, Evan Hall, the running back, and then uh, almost the entire secondary uh, of U of I, and along with running back Chase Brown invited. Yeah, no, the invites are pretty much all out, but it's a really fluid process. Well, you know what happens? We'll lose guys to injuries in bowl games. We'll lose guys that, you know, get injured while they're training. Um, so it's, it's kind of an on, ongoing process. Right now, uh, there's, uh, we just got a commitment from Jordan Battle today, a safety from Alabama who we were waiting on. Uh, we've got one out to Will Levis from Kentucky. If we, if we don't get Will, that's, that's probably going to snap our streak of seven straight years of the first-round quarterback. So we, we hope we can get Will Levis on board. Um, and there's really just like a couple of two running backs. Zach Charbonnet at UCLA has an invite. Kenny McIntosh from Georgia. But, but that process is pretty much done. Um, what we're doing right now, we're waiting on some juniors um, for when they declare because now we can – it's about a 10-year-old rule from the league office. We can bring juniors that graduate before our game. So – um, we've kind of earmarked a couple spots for some juniors that we know will, will graduate and, and might want to play in the game. So, so, you know, that's all we're doing at this point, you know, kind of filling in holes and hoping a couple of these last guys jump. And, and uh, you, like you said, the Illinois secondary with, with Quan Martin and, and uh, you know, Devin Witherspoon and Sidney Brown and then his, his twin brother Chase. And, uh, yeah, in the, the North, you know, a couple guys from Northwestern. So good, good, good Big Ten representation this year. We have a number of Michigan Michigan guys, a couple of Ohio State, a couple of Michigan State. Um, so we 
good, 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 good Big Ten uh, representation this year. All right, Jim, we we appreciate it. We appreciate it very much. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You too, Jim. Jim Nagy, Executive Director of the Reese Senior Bowl. We'll take a break. We'll have more with Jim Miller and Tom Thayer after this on Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and going to miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. Bears fans, how do you start your game day? Every game day should start with Tostitos, chips, and dip. Or even better, hot Italian beef nachos. Spice up your game day and rep your fandom all season long with the Tostitos hot Italian beef nachos recipe. Made especially for Bears fans. Just head to Tostitos.com slash recipes for details. You can also add all the ingredients to your cart online directly from your favorite retailer. This message is brought Brought to you by Tostitos, the official chip and dip of the NFL. Go Bears! From bridges and trains to iconic high-rises, have you ever wondered who's powering Chicago? Power Unlike our sports heroes, they go unnoticed. Yet they proudly keep our businesses, homes, and great city running. IBEW Local 134 electricians and the electrical contractors have the experience, training, and reliability to keep Chicago open for business. It's game time, but before Terry can enjoy his broad, he's got one last thing to digest, an impending work deadline. Luckily, CDW helps Terry and his team make big plays from anywhere, even the tailgate, by pre-configuring Lenovo ThinkPads with the Intel Evo platform. With business class performance and effortless connectivity, Terry tosses over the files, and she's got them. Lenovo makes seamless productivity possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Lenovo client. CDW, official technology solutions advisor of the Chicago Bears. With our newest Unlimited plan, everyone's welcome. Introducing Welcome Unlimited from Verizon for just $30 a line per month for four lines with auto pay plus taxes and fees. Our best priced Unlimited plan ever. Did he say $30? Yep, $30 a line for the whole family. The network you want, the price you love. Switch to Verizon today. Paper-free billing required. Unlimited 5G nationwide 4G LTE. In times of congestion, your data may be temporarily slower than other traffic. All smartphone lines on the account must be on Welcome Unlimited and are eligible only for select promotions. Includes domestic talk, text, and data usage only. Data roaming at 2G speeds. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by CDW. People to get it with Tom Thayer, Jim Miller from Sirius XM, NFL Radio's Moving the Chains. We just got off the uh, line with Jim Nagy talking about Senior Bowl. He, uh, Jimmy mentioned uh, uh, Will Levis, and always quarterbacks, no matter what, they're always going to get a lot of attention. But Max Duggan is going to be there from TCU. Where, where is he projected to go in the draft? You potentially yeah, I think, think. it's early, but. Yeah, well, I I think, you know, earlier I think everybody had this, oh, this is going to be such a deep class at, at quarterbacks. And now that, you know, all the research has been done and how the guys have, have played this year and some guys are, are injured, like the the quarterback at Tennessee, you know, the, I, I don't think it's as, it, you know, as they're starting to uncover all this information, it, it's not as deep as what people think, you know. But I do think uh, uh, the Kentucky kid is well thought of for, for me from, you know, if I were recommending him, uh, I don't know who's his agent or who he's dealing with. I, I would go down and play in that game because he could really separate himself uh, from the, the class of quarterbacks depending on, on how he does. You know, because, I mean, think of even Carson Wentz. Remember when he went there from North Dakota State? I mean, Philadelphia traded up twice and took him at number two overall, and it was all because of what happened uh, down in Mobile. So uh, if I were advising the Kentucky quarterback, I, I would show up. Josh Allen, it's happened to numerous guys uh, down there, so he, sh- he should accept that invitation. All right, as we get closer to uh, kickoff against the Detroit Lions, let's look at some things the Bears are doing right now. And one of them, Tom, I want to talk about is that secondary. Four starters in the in the secondary rookies yesterday, and you throw in the fifth, or excuse me, um, Saturday. You throw in the fifth and Elijah Hicks rotating in. Uh, it's amazing how young they are, but how bold they are. They, they are they're making plays on the ball. Yeah. They are being physical. And they really have become a, a future strength, in my opinion, of this team when you consider Eddie Jackson next year as well as Jalen Johnson and whatever else they may do. These guys, even if it's depth, 
even if it's depth. These guys playing builds depth for the future. Right, but you know, it's you think about the conditions that you played in this past week, and everybody out there is freezing. You're not really loosening up. You're playing a little bit tighter than you would in perfect playing conditions. Now you bring it into this week and a team that's been throwing the ball well, and the playing conditions are going to be perfect. It's going to be a fast field. It's going to be indoors. You're going to get loosened up. It's going to challenge your conditioning. So I think this is really a great game to watch the defensive backfield and how they intermix with this group of receivers from Detroit. But, you know, they can't do it on their own. They, the Bears somehow have to try to manipulate pressure up front that just compromises uh, uh, Jared Goff's throwing position, you know, not to say it has to result in a sack, but make him uncomfortable in the area he's throwing from. And, Jim, they're doing this stuff uh, defensively with uh, – as. Tom is pointing out, as we know, not a lot of pressure, only 18 sacks this year, but they're tied for fourth in interception percentage because because teams are running on them more, so the interception percentage is is higher because they're getting to the ball. But uh, young guys learning, and you know, here's Matt Eberflus, Jim, last night on the Bears Coaches Show talking about the resolve of Kyler Gordon this season. Well, he's going to have his resolve challenge. You're playing corner in the NFL, so that, that's the way it goes. I mean, you're going to get targeted. You're going to get, you know, things. the ball's going to get thrown to you. Well, I think that the defensive backs are really doing a good job, and I mentioned this the last couple a uh, couple weeks ago, I believe, um, is that when the ball is thrown on a go ball, we've been doing a really good job, and I think uh, Jalen had one yesterday again, or it might have been Blackwell. Blackwell. Blackwell, where he was looking, he was in phase, but also looking back as his arms go up, you know, so he won't get defensive pass interference. And I think our defensive backs coach has been doing a really good job with that. James Rowe and also David Overstreet have done a nice job with that, repping that during the drill work. And he's playing outside, and he, you know, yeah. did nickel all season long. That's a big job. Maybe this opens up because Matt keeps talking about Gordon as a ball hawk. He feels he's a ball hawk, and he's got interceptions well, now. Back-to-back weeks and three overall. Do you think this will allow him to make more plays on the ball playing outside right now with Jalen Johnson and Kendall Vildor on IR? Yeah, I agree. And I think that's twice we've seen Kyler Gordon kind of bait a quarterback into an interception. You know, he kind of baited Josh Allen into the throw, and he's able to jump up and make the pick. If I remember correctly, I believe he did it to Kirk Cousins uh, in Minnesota where he baited him on the bootleg. You know, he came up, looked like he was going to play the flat, and all of a sudden, all right, I see where Kirk's eyes are. Now uh, acts like he's playing cover two and then bolts and, and makes the interception, I think, coming out of the half uh, for Kyler Gordon. Blackwell has shown sides that you just mentioned. How about Jalen Jones? All he's got to do is just complete it. He, he would have had another interception yeah. on Josh Allen here in this game. Brisker is a force, obviously leads the league uh, or leads the team in sacks because he got his fourth sack in that safety blitz that they had against Allen. So they're all doing some really good things. And I would say that about Elijah Hicks. I think at times he, he, you know, got his sea legs a little bit and now he's starting to emerge a little bit more where he's a little bit more confident in what he's doing. So I'm, I'm really excited about the secondary because like you said, they've done it with a lack of pass rush. You know, it's 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 more their effort, and they've got to cover longer and and do it uh, mistake free, and not have penalties and and things of that nature. And they've really have their techniques have really improved, and they're really it's an exciting group. Heck, you know, I'm Tommy, excited about this group. Tommy Brisker is tied for first among DBs with four sacks in the NFL. You think about guys like Jalen Ramsey in the past that have had a lot of sacks, uh, but I I love that aspect of his game, and I I think they're going to keep sending him. Oh, so do I. I mean, it's all about ability. He has the chance to be a Swiss Army knife amongst defensive players where I think you can play him on the edge of a defense and rush him. I think you can play him at linebacker level and give him a little bit of run responsibility. And then you can play him back in the defensive backfield. You know, so... I think Brisker's football is best is yet to come. And, you know, I think that was the most concerning position of the roster when this football season started. And if they could solidify the defensive backfield for a period of time here and be able to concentrate closer to the football, it would help this team immensely. And it's an idea that, uh, and I talked to Ryan Poles about this, about keeping a a unit uh, as chemistry wise as possible if you can into the next year and make you know keep that a strength the strength keep it a strength if you can try and keep guys and, and add a few pieces as well uh, as they get ready for this game the Bayless Jones topic has certainly got everybody's attention now because of that one play and Jim I saw it again today on a Twitter feed 
Uh, the throw was absolutely outstanding. Max protection. Jalus, or excuse me, Velas runs to an area, gets behind the corner and underneath the safety, and he caught it rolling down to the ground, but he trusted the speed. Can something like one play like that open uh, the confidence Justin would have in Velas where he takes it from the practice field to Sundays uh, more often here in the next couple weeks in a platform the next season for Velas? Yeah, absolutely. Here's what I love about what he did last weekend. He responded. Right, The coach kind of called him out. The coach called him out, and the kid responded, not only with the two kickoff returns. Yes, that great play that he displayed right there. You saw everything Jim Nagy was talking about, the speed the Bears saw uh, saw out of him and everything of why they drafted him. I thought the slant route was really good, (laughs) how he performed. So I like that he responded, that when you challenge players at the NFL level, typically they will respond because if they don't, that's when it's concerning. Right. He Calling all Bears fans, get the ultimate VIP fan package with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket and appearance from Bears legends and more by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com. Back with our final segment, a short one, after this on Chicago Sports Radio 670, The Score. Football legends weren't born making game-changing touchdowns. They started out like the rest of us, playing with the neighborhood kids. And while it wasn't the playground or the local field that made them great, those places did give them the opportunity to become great. Let's go! At PNC, we believe every kid deserves a place to play and learn. Over the years, we've teamed up with the Chicago Bears to give the kids of Chicago learning resource centers that spark curiosity. PNC Bank and the Chicago Bears, just one way we're making a difference. The PNC Financial Services Group, Inc., all rights reserved. Connie's Pizza has been Chicago's go-to pizza for over 50 years. Call 312 Connie's with pizza options including classic Chicago deep dish, stuffed, thin crust, and our original Connie's Pan Pizza. Connie's is home to Chicago's pizza. Call 312 Connie's and visit Connie's Pizza with a whole family and big groups and visit before and after Chicago Bears games utilizing our shuttle buses to and from all home games. We're located just six minutes from the stadium and have enough parking for everyone. Connie's Pizza is your go-to pizza for Chicago pizza. Call 312 Connie's and order today. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. It's the Ford Shine Bright Sales Event, and Ford is helping you be a light for others this holiday season. Right now, get special offers on select Ford trucks and SUVs. Come in and choose a vehicle in stock, or simply place a custom order, lock in your rate, and you're protected. Hurry in to your local Ford dealer today and find the Ford vehicle that helps you shine bright all season long. Not all models, trims, or features may be available or may be subject to change. What do you call a group of friends decked out in orange and blue who hug and toast with Miller Lite after every great play and in between endless choruses of the Bears? You call it Miller Time in Chicago. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2022 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right, final... uh... 30 seconds of the show. Jim, give me a pathway to victory for the Bears over the Lions. Run the rock. I think they're susceptible. Tom? Uh, get some pressure on Goff. Have him throw a couple of those interceptions the Bears been getting. Yeah, and uh, stop their run as well because I think they want to get recommitted to it. Jim, we love John. Sorry I had to cut you off, but we I overdid it here tonight. We're running out of time, so we got to go. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you down the road. Thank you. That's Jim Miller, Tom Thayer. Thanks to our producer, Leo Stoddaher. Also, Jordan Trudup and Dan Barilli. Thanks to our guests, Lomas Brown of the Detroit Lions Radio Network and Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl. I'm Jeff Joniak for Tom and Jim. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Chicago Sports Radio 670, The Score. Good night. Thanks for listening to this Chicago Bears Network presentation of Bears All Access. Podcasts are available on chicagobears.com and on iTunes or download the official Bears mobile app. Bears All Access has been brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Miller Lite.